Hello and welcome to Field Notes. Guess what? I'm not dead. I know, it's been like three months and I do this a lot. Like three months, I'm not gonna post anything and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna post all the things and then I never do. Okay, so if you are like 99% of the people who click on YouTube videos, you've read the top bit and it does not say Earthquakes Part 3. And that's because Earthquakes Part 3 is taking longer for me to get a script working. The script is is in progress, but it's not good. The Earthquake series will continue because it is not done. We're not done. Earthquakes are not done. So those will be back, I promise. So what can we expect from this video is exactly what the title says. We are going to be talking about the Mohs hardness scale. Yes, let's insert that innuendo -y joke right here because we've all heard it before. So this is a tool that geologists and other rock enthusiasts will use to help identify a sample. So this scale was developed in 1812 by a German mineralogist named Frederick Mohs. So what Mr. Frederick Mohs did was he picked 10 samples ranging from very soft to very hard and with these 10 samples we are able to comparatively determine the hardness of a rock. You will notice that I use the word comparatively because this is an arbitrary scale based on hardnesses of other things. So let's go over those 10 different samples starting with number one. Number one we have talc. It's very very soft which is why it's number one. Next we have gypsum. Third is calcite. Four is fluorite. This one is a like a sea foamy green one but they also come in a variety of different colors. Number five is appetite. Not like I'm hungry appetite, it, it's A-P-A-T-I-T-E. -T. Number six is feldspar. Number seven is our friend Mr. Quartz. Number eight is barrel, who is also known as topaz. So this is obviously not like topaz jemmy topaz, this is just a hunk of topaz. Number nine we have corundum, which in its gem quality form is also known as uh, sapphire. So this is corundum. And then finally number 10 we have diamond. Which go figure they don't send you a diamond in your hardness kit. So how do you test an unknown rock? So like I said before the scale is mostly arbitrary using only these minerals as our guides so we use these minerals. If you take a geology lab of some sort you will see this this kit. This is a very common kit to be using in like a geology lab or even just like a basic earth science lab. And you have all of these samples that I just showed you ranging from one to nine. So the hardness of a rock is really its resistance to being scratched. Using these minerals as our guide, we take our rock sample and test it against them to see what scratches it and what is scratched by it. Now there is a scratching technique and we should go over that. When you get this set in your class, it's not going to look uh, pretty and new and in the box. It's going to have been used for 20 years. So when you get them, they won't look like this. You'll have little tiny shards of things and you know, you wanna make sure that you're not causing more damage than is necessary to the kit. And you also wanna make sure you are not testing incorrectly uh, against somebody else's goofy mess. Okay? So number one, I would say, is find the biggest chunk you can of one of these rocks. If it is labeled, that's even better. These two, they look very similar, and oftentimes they will look very similar in your kit. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that you have one that maybe has the number on it already, because those two bits can get swapped in and out. So if you have like a little broken segment, it could be a three, but it could also be a two, depending on how messy somebody was in throwing them all back in. The second piece of advice that I will give you for performing a proper scratch is to find a clean surface, because a lot of them will already have scratches made on them. Again, they've been used for 20 years in this classroom, so you want to make sure you are not confusing your scratch with somebody else's, because they may have been testing something completely different. Maybe they had a hunk of diamond, and now they've just scratched the heck out of everything. So like on this one we can see, do you see how it's super shiny right there? There, look at that. There's no scratches on that. So because that face does not have any scratches on it, that would be a good place to test. Another part of scratching technique is to use a pointy side. You see how that, that corner right there, that's pretty pointy. You take it and you're just gonna scratch it, just like you think you would, just like that. Now, you probably can actually see that already, that there is definitely a scratch there now. And if you wipe it, so you've got your powder. 
So now that we're starting to scratch up our rocks, let's figure out what all the scratching is actually going to mean and translate into the hardness scale. So if we know that our sample can be scratched by appetite, whose hardness is five, we know that the hardness of the rock scratched has to be under that of appetite. You kind of wipe your finger on it and you come away with some powder. So that's a good start, but that's still kind of a wide range of what the sample could be. It could range anywhere from one to five. So to keep that range getting narrower and narrower, you are just going to continue the process of scratching with different rocks. Now you're not gonna scratch with anything above a five because we already know that this will scratch it at five, which means it will not be higher than this. Then you will try and scratch it with say a three, which is calcite. Take a sharp end of our calcite and try and scratch. And as you can see, even though I'm like rubbing it, look at all of that white that's just, it's just flaking off. And you can look at the corner that you used and you can see it's been dulled, which is a good indication that this is not being scratched, but it is in fact scratching your sample. Like obviously look, like those are bits of calcite that have come off. You can do kind of a double test. You can take this, which is your your bottom end that you think is being scratched by your sample, and you can try and scratch it with your actual unknown. Again, find like a good space. And right there, look, you can totally see that. Hopefully the camera will pick it up well. That has been scratched. Right there, you move it, yep, all of that dust. It's just white dust coming right off of our calcite. You basically keep that scratch test going until you have come to a range of hardnesses. So what happens if you are in the field and you can't identify a rock? Well, obviously you're gonna sit down, you're gonna pull out your little hardness kit, and you're gonna test every rock from here to Timbuktu. No, you won't. So along with these minerals, geologists have kind of come up with a more cheaty way of being able to tell the hardness, and that is by using different household objects that will be approximately the same hardness as some of these minerals. This is helpful because it is slightly more space saving than just carrying around a box with your little identified samples. So at the low end of the spectrum, we have your fingernail, which is approximately a 2.5. The next common household item is a copper penny, which is about a 3.5. Next on the list is a pocket knife, which is about a 5.5. And finally, at the highest end of the spectrum is a nail, which reads at about a 6.5. Now these obviously are not going as high as the minerals do, but once your rock isn't being scratched by a steel nail, you've really limited the amount of rocks that it could be. And at this point, you're really going to have to look at other features of the rock to confirm your identification. The Mohs hardness scale is really a cornerstone in figuring out an unknown sample. Besides hardness, you can narrow down a rock's identity by using several other features, and these include color, luster, and the cleavage. And after that, it's just guesswork, or science, you know, whichever. So that's the Mohs hardness scale. It is a very common tool that you will encounter in learning about geology, and it's a good thing to just generally understand. These are really cheap. <laughs> if you want to pick one up, it's like 10 bucks. I'll leave a link to where I bought mine down below because I kind of think it's a neat thing to have. I do want to mention that I do have a Facebook page now. Is Facebook still a thing that people do? Because I have one, like two years late. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like it if you liked it, subscribe if you would like to see more. Make sure you leave me a comment down below. I'd love to talk to you guys and kind of see what you guys are all thinking and doing and whatever. And I will see you, hopefully, much sooner than three months. Yes, I know, you're a 10 on the most hardness scale. Yes, I've heard that. Thank you. I have been picked up by geologists before. Ah, you tried something different. You know, it, you get props for being different.